is Fox 26 Morning News at 9 a.m. Connected to you. But first, a big announcement out of Texas Children's Hospital. Doctors there are the first in the world to use laser therapy to treat epilepsy. Doctors now believe this may be a life-changing option for many epilepsy patients, children and adults. It sure helped a nine-year-old boy from San Antonio area. Thank you, Dr. Curry. Thank you, Dr. Wolfong. Keegan Dyser takes the time to thank the doctors who gave him a life, a life he's never known free of seizures. A room full of supporters cheers on Keegan, from his doctors and nurses to the volunteers at the Bluebird Circle Clinic, where he was treated at Texas Children's Hospital. Keegan has suffered from two types of seizures. One made him giggle uncontrollably dozens of times a day, even throughout the night. It may not sound so bad, but it disrupted everything in his life, including sleep. The teachers there were saying that he was having these behavior issues because he was laughing out of, he was laughing in a, in, at inopportune times or inappropriate times. Keegan also suffered from tonic seizures that would make him stiff and unaware that he had sleep for hours. It was pretty difficult doing things with Keegan because we were always anticipating the next seizure to happen. Keegan had a dangerous form of epilepsy because his stemmed from a lesion very deep in his brain. Ten medications, nor an implanted vagus nerve stimulator, stopped them. The typical option would require major brain surgery with life-threatening risks. That's where Dr. Angus Wilfong comes in. It was his idea to try the real-time MRI-guided laser surgery. And I was made aware of this technology. Um, the company is actually here in Houston. Um, and they were using this technology to treat brain tumors and it's used by major cancer centers to treat tumors and uh, I saw right away that this would be an opportunity to access these deep abnormalities that are causing seizures in very hard to get to places in the brain. Dr. Daniel Curry helped perform the laser procedure on Keegan. It only required a small incision instead of major brain surgery. And this was able to deliver laser light and that laser light would heat that tissue. And that tissue, when heated to a certain level, is then destroyed and no longer able to impart the seizures on his brain. Laser treatments have been available for brain tumors, but not epilepsy. So allowing their son to be one of the first to undergo it was a tough decision for his parents. What if it goes wrong? What if something happens? What happened was a success. Keegan has not had a seizure since the surgery four months ago. Uh, it was, I mean, it's the hardest decision we've ever had to make, but ultimately the best. I mean, he's a completely different kid. He's very comfortable with, with him, before, whereas before he wasn't very comfortable with himself. Uh, he's doing things now that he never would have done before. He's riding his bike on his own. Uh, he's volunteering to take out the trash. Keegan had a plan when he recovered. School. Why school? <laughs> Because when I woke up, I said I wanted to go to school. He loves school and can't wait for classes to start in the fall. As for his seizures... Gone forever. Joining me now are two of the doctors involved in this revolutionary new treatment. They are Dr. Angus Wolfong, Medical Director of the Epilepsy Program at Texas Children's Hospital, and also Dr. Daniel Curry, the Director of Pediatric Surgical Epilepsy and Neurosurgery with Texas Children's Hospital. And I have to say it's certainly an honor to be among your company. To see what you guys are doing at Texas Children's is truly amazing. It must have been a really good feeling yesterday for that precious little boy to come up and hug you guys. And that was his only comment out of all the things his parents said as he just wanted to say thank you to the both of you. It is special to be able to help children like Keegan and other families deal with such a terrible disease like epilepsy and that's why surgery is so important because we can cure the disease and and make the seizures go away forever which is what we really want to do. When I talked to you yesterday Dr. Wilfong you were telling me how it just breaks your heart to see patients coming in every single day if perhaps medications aren't helping them and there wasn't this 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 procedure available for for people who had deep you know problems inside of their brain like he did. We're faced every day with families that are suffering terribly because of the impact of the seizures on their child's lives on their ability to attend school and get an education and Considering surgery on a child's brain is, is a big decision for us and for the families mm -hmm. and to be able to offer them a much less invasive and what we believe 
to be a safer alternative is a big step forward. Dr. Curry, a huge deal coming out of Texas Children's Hospital that you guys are on the cutting edge and the very first in the world to be a part of this. What was it like to perform this procedure and then find out that it was a success afterwards? Well, it was very um, surprising that it was it worked so perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, we always have a heavy heart when we have to recommend epilepsy surgery for children with, an, with uh, seizures that won't be resolved with medicine. And those are very large procedures. And it's, in this particular case, we're able to apply the same level of treatment, but with far less surgical mm -hmm. injury. And it makes the offering of the surgical procedure far easier. Keegan's parents were telling me how very difficult it was for them to make that decision and say, okay, we're going to let our child be the third in the world to ever have this procedure done for epilepsy. But I understand that you both encouraged them and said, but this has been done for brain tumors, so we really feel like that it will help him. Yes, we, um, we were reassured by the, the, the history of this application to brain tumor surgery and how effective it has been in the future. And its application to the epileptogenic le lesions, we thought, was a logical mm -hmm. uh, step. Let's talk about what Keegan would have had to go through if Dr. Wilfong had not come up with this idea and if Dr. Curry, you hadn't helped pulled it off. He was going to have to undergo some very invasive surgery that had all different types of, of problems that could come about after that surgery. It's a very large procedure in order to resect the sort of lesion that Keegan had. It involves a large incision in the scalp an opening in the skull, a separation of the two hemispheres of the brain, an incision into the connections of those two hemispheres, and then a delicate surgery around circuits that control memory, control uh, functions that we don't think of mm -hmm. very frequently, and it controls the pituitary gland. So it's an area where we can cause a great deal of harm trying to help him with those large invasive techniques. And Dr. Wilfong, when you have patients who have to have a procedure like that done, which is what Keegan would have, again, had to have done if you hadn't come up with this idea, is that it causes a type of diabetes that a lot of people probably aren't even aware of, that he would have to be on hormonal replacement possibly for the rest of his life because of that. Most children that have this type of operation that was specific for Keegan's case, removing the malformation in his brain called a hypothalamic hamartoma, they virtually all develop something called diabetes insipidus. And that's a condition where they can't regulate their thirst and the uh, amount of salt in their blood, so they have uncontrolled urination. And uh, it can be very, very dangerous and needs to be treated with hormone replacement for the rest of the child's life. And uh, it, was, it was so wonderful for Keegan to wake up after surgery to be just the same old Keegan, but just not to have seizures anymore and he didn't develop the diabetes insipidus. His dad started crying when he told me what it was like to hear him laugh for the first time and, and first of all be shocked and say, oh no, is it another seizure? And then mm -hmm. to realize it was the first time he had heard his son laugh naturally, not because of a seizure. What an amazing feat. What will happen at this point now? Will doctors be coming to you all and trying to learn this procedure so that they can offer it to their patients? What, what happens at this point? How do you proceed to help people all over the world? We're going to continue to identify patients in, in our practice that we feel that can benefit from this surgery. We're always anxious to identify children that we can cure of the disease. And those that will benefit from this particular procedure will, will move forward with it. And I believe, based on our experience, um, other centers will start mm -hmm. to do this procedure as well. And for now, though, the, the typical thing is to try medications first, then, then uh, you know, less invasive things, and then come to this if this is what's needed. That's the usual mm -hmm. approach. We try to be as minimally invasive as possible in all of the epilepsy management. So, so far, the only candidates for this sort of operation are those that have failed medical therapy and would need a very invasive, injurious brain surgery to remove their seizures. Well, it is such a great thing that people have an option now, and we are so happy to be able to talk to you more about it. Thank you for your precious time this morning. I know you were so busy. We're going to let you get back over to Texas Children's Hospital. Dr. Curry, Dr. Wilfong, again, an honor to talk to you both. Congratulations on a huge success story. We are so happy for little Keegan and, and his future that he has now that his parents say never would have happened without the two of you. Thanks, Thank you. Melissa. Good to talk to you. Natalie.